We have a load of people watching us today from Georgia, from Florida, from Arizona. Someone's watching from Mars, apparently. Steve DeVal from Thor Motor Coach, along with Adam Gudger, our national sales manager of our diesel division. Adam, we got a lot of people tuned in, and we are talking Venetian today, and I'm glad you're here with us. And, and you even brought props today. So props to you for bringing the props. I did. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna, I usually I'm gonna bring go. my props on the road. So awesome. Well, I got our, our slideshow pulled up. We're talking Venetian today. Uh, for everybody who has comments over on the right side of your screen in the chat tab, what we are going to do is ask you to ask your questions down in the ask a question tab, which is right down below. It simply says, ask a question, put your questions in there. We have a number of them. Uh, if you are in the chat tab, you can simply hit the plus button and you can ask your question that way. Just ask a question. It goes directly to our ask a question poll and we'll be closing down our chat window here in uh, a little bit but first adam i'll turn things over to you so let's talk venetian because we got a lot of great things happening for our 2021 model year so go ahead and take it away and roll with it yeah you know everybody asks you know what brand am i most excited about and you know i i've we got a lot of great products, obviously, and you know, from the Palazzo and the Aria, which you know is our newest introduction, has just been one of the hottest coaches out there. And you know, Venetian, and obviously our flagship with the Tuscany. But um, man, Steve, this this Venetian product is just really, you know, really starting to hit its stride. And unfortunately, we just don't have a ton of Venetians out in the field. I guess it's a good or a bad problem. And the the bad is is that you can't find them very many places and especially the newer ones the you know the 2020s that we did ship um, a majority of that stuff has been retail sold and you know we made some really cool design changes we, we made some really cool content upgrades for for 2020 and and um, I just my guess is is that we're just going to continue to have more and more success with this product this is a this is a segment of our diesel market that's actually the largest segment that we have because it's where we move into this bigger platform, this I, what we call an ISL engine. And uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with RVs as much, there's, there's really three sizes of motor that, that are most common in, in the industry. Um, there's what's referred to as the ISB, which is a 6.9 liter engine. And um, that, that 6.9 liters refers to the displacement, basically the size of the motor, which, ultimately is going to provide the amount of, of power torque um, we hear torque in the rv business a lot because um and, and what we need to do is we need to get this heavier vehicle moving down the road and and um you know with rvs people travel further distances and as they get more luxurious they travel even further and, and use them more often and and the reason why the segment when you get into the isl engine which is that next move up you get to what's called an 8.9 liter and um, the maximum torque that you can produce with a, a 6.7 liter engine um, is only 800 pound feet of torque which is what we offer in the aria which is a lot for that size of unit 34 to 40 feet but when you get up into the the bigger 40s with the bigger slides and the 42s which we offer on the venetian um this this 8.9 liter engine will enable us to go to all the way from 800 pound feet of torque up to 1150 or 1250 depending on if it's a 380 or 400 which we offer both horsepower sizes in the isl and that that extra torque is is considerable we're talking about 350 to 450 pound feet or you know upwards of 50 percent more power and and that's the reason why there's so many people that buy in that 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 segment of the market because it it just enables you to go anywhere and you're not impeded with with the speed that you can go and um, and it's just a really comfortable, just a just a great platform that 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 Freightliner offers us with with that model. Now talk about because we do offer the two engines. What models you get the uh, 380 horsepower in, and what models you get the 400 horsepower version in? Yeah, so we have two floor plans in, in each um, in each length. Um, we have what's called the L40. Uh, which is our, uh, which is one of our 40 footers. In fact, uh, Matt Zimmerman, who's um, our RV group leader, he's over Airstream and he's over Thor Motor Coach. And he's also over Keystone. He just, he and his wife, Monica, just purchased a, an L40 for their family. They traded their Challenger in. Um, and then we have the R40, which is our bath and a half. And we made some changes 
um, with with that particular floor plan for this model year, just tweaked it a little bit. But you know, bath and halves are upwards of eighty percent of what we sell in in our diesel motorhomes um, because of the fact that there's that separate master bath in the back, and then mm -hmm. moving up to the and those are both on the three eighty horsepower ISL. And then we have two 42 footers. We have the B42, which is the first one that we introduced, um, which is a, a two bath bunk model uh, that's been very successful. Um, in fact, we have a dealer in Louisiana that's, I think they've averaged like 10 days per unit that have showed up. They can't get them fast enough, but uh, they're really, um, it's really become a, a super hot product. It's, it's kind of a a larger version of our Aria 4000 for anybody who's seen that Aria 4000 out there. We actually have a, a tag axle version of that now. And then we have a, another brand new floor plan called the F42, which um, really we've only shown one place. We had it at the uh, the Tampa Super Show was where uh, we unveiled it. And I think we sold five or six of them there. And uh, unfortunately, we haven't been able to produce it anymore because of what's been going on. But um, yeah. But they're starting to roll back off the line again now. And and um, it's it's a fantastic uh, 42 foot bath and a half with curbside seating and and um, you know it, it's interesting because you know I've been doing this for 20 years and you see all these different floor plans that are out there and I, I still think that if you really hone in and take a look at what our offerings like um, our floor plans are, are I I believe to be the best in the business and that's because we I think just do a better job of listening to our customers and their needs and. And have just continued to evolve and improve over the course of time. Yeah, we have all the uh, floor plans uh, pulled up right now. And as we have these pulled up uh, in the years that I have been there and have worked with you, it's really kind of nice to see how you have taken and, and helped evolve this product because the Venetian has really gone through a, a complete evolution. It seems like, uh, especially over the last couple of years. It really has. It really has, um, you know, our, our floor plans are all uh, brand new, essentially, when you when you look at uh, what our offering is for 2021. And um, where we do some things different than other manufacturers is we don't necessarily just get rid of a floor plan. Sometimes it's just a matter of just making minor tweaks. Like, for instance, in the L40, um, we weren't really very pleased with the amount of egress. Um, if you look at that floor plan in particular, um, on the rear side of entry, because it's got kind of a unique bathroom area. Uh, we just weren't happy with, um, with with how open it was when the slides were open. So we, we, we got with the engineers and we were able to make some changes uh, to make the egress or the pass-through space more comfortable for, for any sized individual. Um, Very nice. Yeah, and then, uh, you know, another thing, you know, that like, like going to the R40, for instance, um, when you look at that one, um, we were so pleased with the the rear bathroom and the F42 that we said, you know, wouldn't it be nice to do that same idea in the R40? Uh, because people really like having a couple lab, labs in the back, a couple sinks in the back. And uh, so we we made that change for this year and we were able to increase our, our wardrobe space at the very same time because we, we are constantly being reminded that, you know, when you're going out on the road for six months, you need lots of hanging space and there's there's just a lot of motorhomes out there that that don't keep in mind that you know people want to have a reasonable wardrobe and you know it's nice to be able to, to to be able to dress up when you want to and 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 have all those comfortable clothes for whichever time of season it's going to be yeah and then we get into the uh, new f42 and one of the great things about this model in particular is you can kind of see down below just the number of different seating options you can equip it with that's right. That's right. Um, you know, one of the nice things about our Venetian product is that we have versatility and dinette space. Um, in the uh, in the plaza and the aria, because of the slide mechanisms that we're using, uh, booth dinettes are are the only um, option that we have. Um, however, in the Venetian, uh, we have what we refer to as a flush floor slide um, in our dinette areas on three of the floor plans, the R40, the, I'm sorry, two of the floor plans, the R40 and the F42. So um, you can either do like an ensemble style, which you see there on the right, where it's pictured where the booth kind of transitions into the into the uh, the J lounge. And then we also have a freestanding dinette, but um, you know, we, we, we already are, um, I think better than most when it comes to booths because of the fact that uh, we, we make them where you can actually sit uh, for people comfortably. A lot of times um, that area against the wall is curved 
and it, although mm-hmm. it may look stylish, it, it, it inhibits the ability to sit for people um, in, in that dinette. Um, we've also um, added um, extra seat belts in, in some of the booths now um, with, with, with engineering's work. And um, so, so like I think the B42 has got a, a four seat belt uh, availability in that booth, which, which, which makes things really nice. And, um, you know, theater seating obviously has been a big deal. And, um, and w- one other thing I wanted to mention, and it's a new change, but the, um, the booths now, um, instead of having drawers for storage mm-hmm. on the outside of those booths, which, you know, was kind of small because they, we had to position around seat belts and whatnot, uh, we were able to work with Villa and we developed a hinge mechanism to where you can actually tip that whole piece out and then everything within that booth is available for storage. And we never can make these coaches where they have enough storage, Steve. I, I, uh, I think that'll be something we're going to be challenged with for, for our lifetimes because you can never bring enough stuff with you. And we want to make sure that our customers have the ability to bring all that they can. You know, we were in the L40 um, last week. Or there it is. There's a shot. We were talking about. Yeah, that's about. the new one. You're, nobody's we, seen this before. Yeah. This is brand we, new. We lifted that up. We were at, where is it? And then we were making uh, that dinette into a bed uh, for part video purposes. We pulled up. We said, well, how cool is this? Now you can store. And in the storage under there is really just the entire size of the that section so that was a great design idea on uh your team and the design team and the engineering team's end we uh we're known in this business as a a research and and copy research and and duplicate type of deal that's what r d stands for and i've always heard that since i first got in the business so we're always trying to get ahead of everyone and do industry first you know with that you know drop down overhead bed that we did in our front door entries we were the first to do that um, this is something that's uncommon, um, and and what was so neat about this development is we we probably improved our storage three times, and it didn't add any additional cost because uh, Bill, I guess, is apparently pretty proud of the drawers and and how much they want to charge us for them, and so by just going to this instead, mm-hmm. um, we really didn't raise the cost, and we we picked up three times the storage. So um, there's nothing wrong with that. No, not at all. A lot of great, uh, a lot of great features in there. Tom, take us through uh, some of the slides that we have here. I know we had uh, talked about we have the exterior uh, options, and I went down uh, and spent some time down where we paint our coaches, and it's really a neat proce- process to see them as they put this sickens paint on. And I, I, it's one of those things that maybe you can walk us through, Adam. It's not something that you send it off and then you get it back in three days. I mean, this is a very detailed process to get this to look, I mean, have a mere finish on it. It takes over a week and a half um, to get these units back. And uh, we, we, it takes a lot of time and we want to make sure all the colors are, you know, there's an, like ridges on the outside. If you put your hand on it, you're not going to feel, you know, bumps between the different colors. And so they do a really good job of color standing. Um, you know, I'm a big proponent of, of, you know, the heavy mask and, you know, the, the more aggressive colors and, and, you know, I just, I, I really love our look. And I, I think that the Thor look is its own and, you know, it's, it's evolved. I, I have a really great designer that I work with. Her name's Maureen. She's, she's really is an artist and, you know, we will have some contentious conversations from time mm-hmm. to time because we don't necessarily always agree with one another. But, you know, over over the course of time, we really learned to work well together. And and I, I feel like every time and we only change our graphics every couple of years. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like every time we do this process, um, they, they seem to come out better. Um, we, we try to really listen to our customers about the colors that they like. And I think we have a really nice variety of, of different looks out there and available for, for, for the mm-hmm. folks. Yeah, we we most certainly do. As we move along in these slides here, we got uh, great exterior colors, full body paint. Let's talk about our cabinetry because uh, we added the studio collection last year, which has taken off. And you have decided we've added uh, a new color as well called Santa Bell. We have. We, uh, when we originally released this studio collection look, there was some, I, w- I want to say nervousness maybe about how it would um, be received by uh, the retail customers interested in motorhomes. I was very confident because uh, we spent a lot of time at, at residential design shows. One in particular um, is called the Kitchen and Bath Show. 
that we, we, we go to every year. And, and one of the things that Marine, our designer and I had noticed really for about the last three years is um, things are a lot more clean, a lot more European, uh, sleek's another word you'll hear. Um, and, and so we wanted to try to do a better job of emulating what new construction and what remodel looks like today in America. Uh, because obviously, you know, this is a home on wheels and um, just like automotive technologies have really transferred over into this industry and, and worked really well together. And that's one of the nice things about Freightliner's relationship with Mercedes is they've really been able to capitalize a lot of the, the creature comforts that people like, but it's the same thing on, on the look. I mean, if everybody today is building a home and they're, they're building it more like what this studio look is, then it, it was an opportunity for us. And, you know, we're really the only ones that have anything like this, Steve, um, in this price segment. Um, you, you know, if you get up into, you know, some of the, you know, half a million to million dollar units, uh, this is a much more common um, design. Uh, but we didn't feel that that we should inhibit um, our RV customers. And as I mentioned, when we first started this presentation, our, our most popular segment not to have the look they want available to them. And um, it's really exciting for us because uh, we know that if anybody goes into a Venetian today and they want to look at our competitors, um, they're just simply not going to find anything that looks anything like what we have. And if they like it, um, we're going to take really good care of you and you're going to like your motorhome better, um, I think, because it's just a better looking unit than anybody else is doing right now. Yeah, a uh, comment from Benjamin says, absolutely love the studio collection. Thank you very much, Benjamin and Susie. Thanks for joining us from North Carolina and John and Lisa from South Carolina. You can ask your question down below under the ask a question or if you're over in the chat, hit the plus sign and ask the question as we continue on. Something else that uh, we are very proud of here is our relationship we have with Moride and how they take just a straight rail Freightliner chassis and upbuild it with the Atlas Foundation. I know it's something you and I have covered in depth a number of times, but for people joining us here, why don't we kind of walk through what the Atlas Foundation is and how it benefits our diesel products, Adam? Yeah, so you really have three chassis in the diesel business to, to be considering uh, when you're looking at new product. Uh, Tiffin has, a, has their very own proprietary chassis that's called Power Glide. Uh, then you have Spartan, uh, which is up in Michigan, um, that, that builds chassis. And then there's Freightliner. Freightliner's just probably a little upwards over 70% of, of the business. I think they'd be 100% of the business if they knew what I knew. Um, their technology is the best that there is. And so, you know, first and foremost, I want to let everybody know we could build our own chassis. We have, we have the capability to do that. Um, we could buy from Spartan if we wanted to. Um, but we've looked at everything very hard and quite simply with, you know, when you have a $68 billion company and Mercedes behind you and Daimler, the largest trucking company in the world, these guys just keep coming up with new great things. And we'll get into the Freightliner stuff later, but, you know, it starts with them because, you know, down in Gaffney, uh, what I don't think a lot of people realize is the reason why it's called Freightliner Custom Chassis is literally when we get with their engineers and we bring our mechanical engineers together, uh, with Morides, um, we all work together and we actually allow them to build placement of, of tanks. And, you know, we, we, we don't cut our chassis or stretch our chassis. We buy them specific to wheelbases. And then when we bring those chassis in with the specs that we want, with the tires that we want, um, you know, with, with all the other um, features and options that we select with Freightliner, uh, Moride will build a platform for us or a foundation is, is probably a better technical term. And we, we get involved in that because it's not just about the length of it. It's not just about, you know, the brand itself because of, you know, the different things, but the floor plans themselves and where all the things above your, above your feet, essentially, when you're standing on the floor affect you know, what's down below and vice versa. We want all that stuff to blend together uh, in a way that it's it, it's one harmonious unit. And and we want to make sure it's as balanced as it can possibly be. And so what's great with, with the way that Atlas is, first and foremost, is we build each foundation specific to the brand, the length, and the floor plan. And so we can get the absolute best 
weight distribution we possibly can. And when you have good weight distribution, good balance, the vehicle is going to perform much better on that V ride suspension and air ride, uh, air, you know, system mm-hmm. that, that Freightliner offers us. Um, and, and so that's, that's really where it starts is, is just making sure that everything's level, make sure everything is, 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 is built precisely for whichever floor plan of unit we're, we're, we're making on that particular day. You know, and as you're talking about floor structure, you have changed the way that we build on there. Do you have that sample? Is now the appropriate time to talk about that and how we yeah, do that? Yeah, we, we can yeah. for sure. So so one of the things, you know, we, we'd had, um, we've had some some huge improvements over the last few years with our, our basement uh, bag stores mm-hmm. where the... Um, basically they're more insulated and we, we have better seals and, you know, we just made our, our basements of our coaches much more contained. One another nice thing about a Venetian is that we have a separate heat exchanger down in the, mm-hmm. in the basement that protects both the holding tanks and then also the storage area. So, you know, if you do travel in colder weather or really warm weather and you have anything perishable that's down below, you can, you, you can keep that stuff protected. But one of the things that, that, we had done before in my past life with a different company is um, we, we had offered a, a feature in our Beaver products, uh, which was uh, an insulated subfloor. Um, m- most, if not all manufacturers today, basically just do a, a, a plywood, a marine grade plywood that they put, you know, some kind of protective covering underneath it. Um, and then they, and then they laminate either a, a, a a pebble grain fiberglass or they just put felt down and that stuff just isn't going to stand the test of time. And we, you know, we build these units to where they're going to last forever. And, you know, why not have your basement floor that's going to be, you know, touching the elements all the time built with better materials in it. So Mm -hmm. it's going to last longer. And so what we decided to do, and this actually took quite some time, but we actually uh, developed a new, structure and you can see this here but there's no wood anymore no organic material in our subfloors anymore and this will be on every single diesel motorhome for for 2021 um and and it's 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 awesome because so on the outside this is a this is a fiberglass and then you have a a a two and a half pound uh, virgin polystyrene and then we have a product called asdale which allows us to laminate this interior pebble grain fiberglass to it. And so it's lightweight, but super strong. I mean, I, it's not going to come apart and it's all vacuum bonded together. And this will be on not only the basement floors, but all the sides um, within the basement as well. And so it's going to help with sound deadening. Um, it's going to help with just protection overall, but just, a, just an awesome product. And, you know, anytime we can have an industry best feature, um, especially when it comes to structure, it, it's pretty cool. And so and nobody's really ever seen this before, but I just happen to have one in my bag. I'm so proud of it. I, I car- literally carry it around with me everywhere I go to show people because it's just something I'd want to have in my motorhome. And, and, uh, so yeah, so this is what it is here. Yeah, that's very neat. And as we uh, continue on, as we talk about some of the other great features, uh, a couple of things that you've changed, uh, the width of the entry door and that, uh, nearly 16 inch, Media Center, both great additions to the Venetian products. So kind of walk us through from when they walk through that door to when they sit down, because that uh, Freightliner Dash, especially the new digital version, has just about every bell and whistle you could ever think of. It does. And, and, you know, going back to what we talked about before, Freightliner has done a really good job of capitalizing on the fact that they have all this Mercedes technology at their disposal. And so for 2020, we were able to, to implement what's called OptiView, which is a new digital dash. And, and John Kreider, who's our VP of product development, had the foresight to know, well, with this great new technology that's right in front of your face, you know, what's the other thing people are always asking for? The other thing that's really important is keep in mind, you know, you're talking 40, 43 feet long, you know, with these units. You know, it's a little bit intimidating for some people and they really like having the extra room, but they just want to feel confident behind the driver's seat. And when you have a 15.7 inch monitor that you can you know, look at your backup screen through, you can see your sides as you're turning your turn signals. Um, you, can, you can have your navigation up where it's large enough that both you and, and your partner um, can, can be able to see that stuff. It just makes all of that anxiety go away. And, and we have the largest, best system in the industry. Um, I think something that really would, and we've already seen it, where people have literally made the decision to buy Venetians and Tuscans because of this system. 
uh, us being the only ones in the industry offering it. So that's that's the that's the first thing. And then second thing is, you know, obviously, you know, your entry is important. Um, we want to make sure that you know you're not frustrated when you're going in and out your front door. You want you to be excited to go inside as well as going out. And um, so we increased our, our our widths to 30 inches from 27. So it's the same door now on the Venetian that we've been offering on the Tuscany for years. It's been very very popular feature on that brand. And as we move through the slideshow, go ahead and keep asking your questions. We got uh, questions piling up there and you can go ahead and hit the plus on the chat window and ask a question or simply open the ask a question tab and ask your question there. And we will get to those in just a few minutes. Uh, we have the multiplex rapid camp plus Firefly wiring system with mobile app. This is really a great addition to make life convenient, whether you're inside your Venetian or out. And you've been using uh, this seven inch screen. This is the third year for the seven inch touch screen, I believe, correct? That's correct. Yeah, really the only change we made for this year is that we incorporated a few more light switches into the system itself. Um, the nice thing about this particular system is that it has Bluetooth connectivity to it. So um, not a lot of people realize that you don't need to use this. You can just download the app on your phone and essentially every function that's that's included here um, is also available to you uh, right there with your with your smartphones and uh, some sometimes my I'm not feeling like getting up all the time and I like to just stay comfortable where I'm at especially these days and and uh, you can just pop on your phone dim the lights whatever you want to do and it, it works really well yeah and we have a uh, full walkthrough on our YouTube channel we'll talk about here in a little bit but as we move through the slides here uh, a lot of great features here something else that I think is a huge addition especially for people who like to maybe go off the grid for a little bit let's talk about our solar panel charging and uh, the ability to add more that's correct yeah so there's another thing that's unique to our company is we we're just not a real huge fan of options um, when you purchase a new RV, the options on your vehicle are essentially worthless um, at the time you go to trade the vehicle in because NAD or National Auto Dealer Association, who is the, the I guess the governing body behind what resale values are going to be, they work with the dealers obviously, but they, they only base uh, the decision of the value of the vehicle on the base price. So we try to wrap as much of those features into the base price of the coach. And really the only option we have on Venetians anymore is is uh, is furniture, which is essentially, you know, it's almost a wash. So there's there's really not a lot there. But um, you know, solar is important and 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 again we've we've spent a lot of time um, researching and finding the best values and and it became to the point for us a few years back where it just didn't make any sense not to put them on because um, for what it was going to cost to do aftermarket um it, it was just too good of a feature and and when all these rvs now have residential refrigerators to have the ability to to maintain a charge on your on your on your battery system um to to keep everything up to charge it, it, it allows you to do that and and we we have a lot of adventurous people out there that like to to be off the grid and you know they don't necessarily want to be plugged into the campground this will allow them to extend the amount of time that they can go uh, before their auto gen start kicks in and, and their generator starts running. Um, and like you mentioned, um, we did build in the uh, the structure into the roof of our units to where you can't add two more panels in the in the solar charger that that is installed uh, from the factory we can take uh, two additional panels in addition to the one that you see pictured here. All right, as we move on to our next slide, we have a lot of great things to talk about uh, here. Uh, the, we have Aqua Hot, we have a generator on the slide up front. So kind of walk us through these great features. I do, let's start with the Aqua Hot because I think this is just a really neat system. I think it was a great addition to the Venetian. Yeah, well, you know, obviously in any environment you're, you're living in, you know, you want to make sure that you're able to maintain whatever temperature makes you feel comfortable because then you feel like being there more often and, and, and you just have a better experience. And, and um, you know, starting out with the heating system, you know, I will tell you that any diesel motorhome we build from the plaza up is, is a four season unit. However, when you get into the Venetian, that's really where um, you get to experience just a more comfortable four seasons because aqua hot in itself the the biggest benefit to it is the fact that it does not strip the 
the air of moisture when you're running your heating system in the vehicle constantly. Um, it's 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 basically it's a it's a four gallon tank of antifreeze and water mixture, and there's a diesel burner underneath it, and there's an electric element that will also help maintain the heat of that fluid. And that fluid is dispersed throughout the unit to these small radiators, which we call heat exchangers. And as that fluid passes through that 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 box, uh, there's a fan behind it will blow through the fluid, and that's what produces the heat from the air. That's the reason why um, the moisture of the vehicle doesn't change. Um, it also provides a much more consistent heat. Um, there's only like a seven degree variance maximum anywhere throughout the coach where with propane, you can see up to 20 degrees. It's significantly quieter. So if you're sensitive to noise at nighttime when you're trying to sleep, um, that's really a, a great benefit. And also consumption wise from efficiency standpoint, even in, in the most extreme conditions, um, it's typically only about two to four gallons of diesel fuel per day that you're gonna use. Um, so it's, it's just a, it's just a great system. And the thing that we always hear from customers that, that have owned units with it is first and foremost, they'll never own anything that doesn't have it again. Um, and, and, and the second thing is, is, you know, they just talk about the comfort and how they feel just more comfortable in those colder environments that, because they're not getting dried out all the time. All right. It um, also produces well, unlimited hot water for the vehicle as well, which, you know, for any of you guys out there that like to take long showers, I know that's important to you. Yep. And as we move on through, uh, we got uh, the big generator in this. This is a big generator in the Phoenician. Yeah. So in 2020, uh, we made the bold step to add a third roof air conditioner to our 40 foot units. And um, in fact, I think Don Kingfield's on. I think I saw that he, he was is. late yep. getting on. Showing up on late. Thing, Come but, on, Don. But, but one of the reasons why Don bought his Tuscany is because of that third roof air. And you know, he he kind of convinced me that it was probably uh, time for us to look at doing a similar thing in the Venetian. And he's right. I mean, you know, one of the things that that we really pride ourselves in is square footage. Um, when you get in our units, they're just they're just more open and roomy and just more comfortable. And you know, when you have more square footage, that's just more air to to cool or heat. So so two roof airs uh, with our full wall slides and and the, you know the way that our floor plans are laid out just. Um, they did a decent job, but, but, but three definitely takes it to a whole nother level. So, you know, especially when you're you know, living down in Houston or, you know, I, I lived in Florida for a while. I know how hot it can get in the summertime there. Um, you know, the Arizona, uh, my, my, one of my best friends, he, uh, he lives down in Oro Valley. It was hundred degrees yesterday. Um, three roof repairs is nice, but th the key is here, Steve, is that we don't offer, anything but a 10k when we went to three airs and, and i bring that up because there's a number of companies out there that will add a third roof air as an option but they maintain that eight kilowatt uh generator and and the, the problem with doing that is um you really can't run three roof airs on an 8k you need 10 to do it so essentially the only time you can ever you know utilize those three airs is when you're plugged in somewhere and we want people to be comfortable whether they're rolling down the road or boondocking or or anything and um you know with that comes an expense but you know we want to make sure that these systems are able to provide power for everything that you need in your vehicle absolutely and as we move on to our next slide keep your questions coming we're gonna get to your questions here in a few minutes just a few more things to talk about on the venetian something else for people who love to stay connected while they are away is the weingar connect 2.0 4G system, Adam. So kind of walk us through this because uh, this is a real easy system to use to keep you connected no matter where you happen to be. Yeah, well, you know, we've learned how important Wi-Fi is in this uh, this COVID day. I mean, I got a, I got a son who's constantly doing the e-learning thing and, you know, he's got all these videos and different things he's got to get on. But um, yeah, you can, you can homeschool, you can you can uh, you can do your business when you're on the road, but uh, just a more reliable system. You're not having to rely on the campground for their Wi-Fi, and and uh, it's it's WineGuard keeps up and up upgrading this every year to a better system. It feels like, and you know those customers I've talked to that have used it have been really happy with the performance of it, and yeah, it's really. standard on this coach, and uh, it it really makes a difference. And, you know, you mentioned Don and I see uh, we have a couple other members of our diesel club here. What a great group of people this really is. Uh, and I know you have a lot of interaction with them. And I guess something we can talk about while we're here and this is up is you meet with uh, a lot of owners constantly who 
give you advice and suggestions and you take all of that to heart. We do. I, I've been lucky. I, uh, you know, I got in this business by accident back in 2000 and, you know, I learned really early on, um, especially in the diesel world that, you know, how passionate these, these people are about their, their homes and, and, uh, and also just the, the camaraderie and, and the sharing of information. And, you know, I've, I've always been very receptive. Um, you know, I don't, I don't take credit for any of the, the new ideas that come out. I just, I feel like I just try to do a really good job listening because, you know, although you can't make one hundred percent what somebody wants, if you can, you can get it to about 85% of what they're looking for. I, I've learned you can have a pretty well, a lot of success with, with things. And, and um, I just have a lot of really good friends that I've met over the years. There's even customers that, that, uh, that we used to sell Monaco's to back because I was at Monaco for about 10 years that still to this day, will will reach out to me and say, Hey, have you thought about doing this or that? Because they, they care about the industry and they care about just moving it forward. And, um, it's probably one of my, probably the best part of my job is, is, is the customer interaction, the passion and our ability to, to, to really create products for them. You know, how, how lucky am I to be able to, to help work on the products I get to sell? Most people in, on the sales side of things, they just sell whatever they're given and we can actually make them better to where it's easier for us to sell them. I mean, that's, that's, that's kind of fun. And, and, then, and then the people are appreciative that you, you actually turned around and actually thought about what they had to say and you did something about it. And you know, that, that's, a, that's a cool thing. I, there's been so many times where I've run into somebody later and said, you, you, darn you, you, I, I, I didn't want you to do this because that means that now I'm going to have to buy this coach. And you know, <laughs> they, they, they kind of laugh about it. But you know, really, I mean, you know, we want people to have the best RV experience that they possibly can. And you know, I think with everything that's gone on um, over the last couple months, I think people are really starting to realize you know, how great this country is. And, you know, I think everybody's really excited to get out and, and explore and, 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 you know, do it from the safety of their own home. And what's a better time to do that than in one of these RVs that, you know, we're going to make sure you're, you're going to be clean and sanitized and, and, and safe and, 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 and just get out there and explore in this thing and have some fun with it. You know, we have a, a family, the Hagans, that uh, full-time in their Venetian, and they write a blog for us. And uh, it's been real interesting. You can read that on our website on thermotorcoach.com. Uh, it's great. It's a uh, husband, wife, and uh, their young son, Adam. And they have been living in this and sharing their experiences, how they're social distancing and um, working full-time and living full-time in their Venetian. So some neat articles. You can find those on our thormotorcoach.com website. Uh, you know, one thing we do want to talk about real quick before you ask a question, because we have a lot of questions to get through, uh, kind of walk us through. And Tom, uh, and somebody asked, where's Tom? Tom's actually running the slideshow in the background, Don. Tom's going to pull up pictures of the Freightliner OptiView dash and walk through this change, because when you guys, when I first walked into this OptiView dash, and I believe it was open house, um, holy smokes, this thing is just amazing i mean it's really just i mean it just gives the sitting in the driver's seat just a whole high-end feel uh not that it wasn't high-end before but it really just is amazing it's just and there we go there's a couple of shots so kind of walk us through uh the real quick because we have a complete walkthrough on on how to use it but kind of talk touch on the the basics of what optiview and the new freightliner digital dash does for us it's interesting how this whole thing began when uh, I was in Gillette, Wyoming, I gosh, I don't even know how many years ago it was now, probably six or seven um, years ago, and uh, Freightliner came to us and, you know, they had an S-Class Mercedes out in the parking lot and they wanted to go on a test drive with me in the S-Class. And I was like, well, why do you want me to drive your Mercedes? Well, we went out there and we did it and they were showing us all these new developments that were going on in their Highline automotive stuff. And we're wondering if, possibly some of these technologies could be useful to our RV customers. And, and um, this screen that you see there, that's, that was developed for Mercedes. And, and so you got something, first and foremost, it's reliable, um, very strategic in the placement of things, you know, very conscientious of, of the visual when you're looking through to make sure that you can see all your gauges, uh, very intuitive, you know, before we had this, what we called an integrated light bar underneath and, um, it was hard to, to, to see and it was hard to use, but just they made everything much nicer and cleaner um, up front. 
uh, with, with this new digital system. And then you'll also notice um, that the whole steering column changed. Uh, it used to be that when you're driving down the road and you wanted to change what gear you're in, although it is automatic, uh, but if you want to downshift, like say if you're going down a, uh, a long decline, they recommend you do that. You'd have to take your head down and look down to push to find where to put yourself in gear. Now everything is right there on the on this toggle on the one side where you can you can change your gears. You can you don't have to search around for your your uh, your engine brake, um, which we have a you know a, a two stage brake in our 42s, and then uh, which is what's called Jacob's brake, and then we have a what's called a pack brake in our 40 footers. But uh, you can use all your engine retarding stuff just right there. All your smart wheel functions are right on the steering wheel, so you know windshield wipers, everything. But you know the whole idea, Steve, is just keeping your head on the road. Again, you're driving in a big vehicle, you got your family with you. You know, we just want people to be safe, and you know Freightliner feels the same way. And and so you know us all working together, we've been able to institute all this this great technology. And you know every customer that I've that I've had the the fortune to to be able to sit down and and show this to has been really impressed by it. And it just makes the overall driving experience much better. And I think it'll encourage people to get on the road more. Yeah, it really is a wonderful system. And I know uh, one thing that I want to mention is, and we're seeing it in all the shots, is the uh, handlight porcelain tile floor. But you brought another prop because last year we changed the way we install our tile floor. So I'll let you pull out your uh, your orange piece of uh, Schluter Dietra. <laughs> And talk yeah. about uh, and talk about that because that's another, along with the the, the foam you showed us before, it's another feature that uh, ensures some weight savings and is just a nice upgrade to have in your Venetian. So our um, our Aria, our Venetian, and our Tuscany, we use porcelain flooring, and we we don't use uh, anything but. However, we are the only company in the RV business that uses this. So I don't know if everybody can see this. Let stuff, me pull this so, up here. Let me get you a full screen here so we can see this. There we go. So this is this is the stuff, and and so this is actually so when, if if you go through all the layers of the floor um, itself, on the on the bottom is what's called Darko, which is a non-breathable fiberglass undersheeting, and then we have a uh, um, we, we have a layer of Luan, and, and then and then we have um, two uh, an inch and a half inch polystyrene uh, insulation that's that's filled into a tubular steel so we use a, a inch and a half tubular steel base that's the structure and then on top of that then that's all insulated and then on top of that we use a five eighths inch structure when all that stuff is vacuum bonded together um that's the first thing i bring that up because two of the companies i'm not going to call out who they are i encourage people to go on people's websites because they show you how you build stuff but two of the biggest manufacturers that we compete against and, and the diesel segments um, literally build their floors out of two by fours. Um, I just don't think that when you're talking about vehicles that weigh between 30 to 44,000 pounds, that you want to have the, the basically the barrier the, or the structural piece that connects your whole house to your chassis made out of two by fours. I, I personally think steel is a, is a much better uh, process. And so we use steel there. Uh, that's, that's what we recommend. And, and then once all those materials are vacuum bonded, before we lay the tile down, we add this material and we set this down onto the uh, onto the onto the structure wood, and then the thin set mortar is is added to this, and then the tile um, beyond. And we talked a little earlier about residential and how this is a house on wheels. Um, when we go to the kitchen and bath show, which we just got back uh, from Vegas, Marie and I did in January, uh, they also have another show going on at the very same time, and it's called uh, the International Home Builders Convention. So there's nobody in the entire residential market that uses anything but this, Steve. No mm -hmm. one. I mean, literally, there's not even another competitive yeah. product out there. They literally have a monopoly on this. In fact, my house that I'm in right now, yeah. the entire home that has porcelain, they use this. Um, if you go around to every other house around here that they're building, say, or if you're doing a renovation, they use this. Yeah. The reason why is because what this does is this allows the bond to be better between the tile and the ground. Because even in a home that's sitting stationary, there's what there's that settling that happens. Well, we have much more extreme than settling. We have actually a rolling earthquake moving down the road, essentially, that we've balanced as best we can with all of the mechanical engineering and the Atlas Foundation and Freightliner Technologies and suspension system 
But even with all that, there's still energy that's going to transfer up into the house of the coach. It's impossible not to. It's just physics. So why in the heck wouldn't everybody use this? Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. If every single home today is built with this stuff, why wouldn't you do it in your motorhome? The reason why is because there's usually only about a one-year warranty on your tile. And so mm -hmm. after that, you're on your own. Well, guess how much it costs to replace all the tile in a motorhome five, six years down the road? A lot. Probably oh, 15, sure. 20 grand. Well, guess what? We don't want people to have to deal with that. We'd rather have a tile that's going to go down and it's going to be there forever, just like everything else. So um, we started doing it. I, I'm shocked that the rest of the industry hasn't caught on and done it yet. But um, it's something you don't see. So if you don't ask the question or if you don't do your research, uh, you're not going to find out about it, but you know, yeah, it did cost us an extra 300 bucks that nobody's ever going to see. And if you know what, you go and look at motorhomes and your salesperson doesn't tell you about it, then maybe, you know, maybe you'll get away with it. But I tell you what, it's, it's just not the right thing to do. It, this should be a, this should be an industry requirement really is what it should be. Um, but it's not. And so um, just be, be careful because you're going to be buying, you know, coach with tile. If you get up into this level of unit, and you just want to make sure you're not going to have a buckling issue down the road because uh, the tile wasn't installed properly. Yeah, and you had mentioned questions. Uh, we have a lot of questions. So you want to start diving into uh, some of these questions? Sounds great. All right. Uh, here is a question from Kent who is asking, are the tag axles passive steering or are they fixed? So that's that's a good question. Um, we, are, we are looking at... Um, Ultra steer is not something that we're currently offering right now. It's 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 fixed. Uh, however, it is something that we have had some inquiries on. So um, it it'll be something that uh, that we'll be working with with Freightliner on the possibility of in the future. Possibly. All right. Uh, it's, it's all about expense. I mean, we want to make sure these coaches are also affordable, and and there is an additional charge that's that's tied to that. All right. Uh, Kent wants to know, living in high altitudes, can one special order the 450 or 605 horsepower Cummins? So the 450 um, is the same ISL engine. Um, mm -hmm. We don't offer it in the Venetian, but we do offer a Tuscany, which is our brand above, uh, that's standard with a 450 engine and and uh, very similar floor plans between the Venetian and Tuscany. We do that by design. We we feel like if we have a good floor plan, we don't want to just force somebody to buy something in a particular segment. So we try to open it up to everybody. So um, we have uh, we have that product uh, that that has the 450 available. Anything bigger than a 450, uh, it would require a new, a different brand. Uh, because uh, the only way to get up into that 600 horsepower range is is uh, is to buy what's called the SL chassis, and that's a completely different chassis than anything we're currently building on. All right. Um, does Thor use all high strength steel superstructure caps surrounding the front driver and passenger, bonding the windshield with automotive grade non hardening adhesive into the all steel superstructure cage? So I guess if I could uh, kind of condense that, talk about uh, the how you build the cab and uh, install the windshield. Yeah, so Moride actually builds our cage for us and it is steel and we do absolutely what they just asked. We, uh, we, build, a, we build a steel cockpit um, surround to, uh, to protect the driver and passenger, uh, you know, in case there was, was gonna be a problem there on the road. All right, and that large 15 inch, the giant Garmin screen you're talking about, is it physically adjustable left, right, up and down or removable like a giant iPad, maybe for taller people, sun angles while driving? There isn't any adjustments on the tilt and you can't take it out of the space. Um, the only thing that you can do though is you can split the screen. So, uh, you know, if you wanna watch um, your, your you know, side cameras and your rear camera and, and have navigation going or you want your radio going while you have nav on or something like that, you can do two different functions at the same time, but there isn't any way to address, adjust it. But it is so large that we haven't really had any, any concerns or objections to uh, viewability of it uh, that I've at least encountered anyway. All right. And I know you had talked about uh, a couple of different things uh, when it comes to building. So talk about the technologies that we use and how we attach our floors and our sidewalls and our roof. OK, so we talked about the floor already, and that's a steel vacuum bonded structure. Uh, sidewalls, um, we use a um, we use tubular aluminum. Uh, we're very fortunate at Thor 
uh, because Thor Industries, our parent company, owns a company called Postal. And Postal is the largest, I, last I heard, they're the largest aluminum uh, supplier in the area. And uh, we made the uh, strategic decision to acquire that company. Gosh, going on, I, I've been with Thor for almost 10 years now, so it was probably almost seven years ago. Um, but they supply us with all of our aluminum. And um, we use a, a tubular aluminum. Um, it's it's inch and a half. Um, we, there's cross member. It's not just a perimeter aluminum. We frame in all our doors and 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 windows, and um, and then we use even larger, up to six inch double tube, quarter inch headers above these large full wall sides for additional integrity. Those are all vacuum bonded together. There's a it's like an 18 to 22 mil um, fiberglass uh, that on the exterior, Delco fiberglass. Uh, that that inch and a half tubular steel. There's a what's called block foam insulation, uh, the two and a half pound uh, polystyrene version block foam insulation, and then your interior wall covering. And that's, that's all vacuum bonded together. And then with our roofs, uh, same thing, no organic material in the structure of the roof. Uh, we use all aluminum, um, aluminum rafters. Uh, that's been going on, I think, back since 2013 or 14. Um, and those are all 15 inches on center all the way down. Again, um, polystyrene uh, block foam insulation all vacuum bonded and then the actual roof itself the exterior is what's uh, is a molded fiberglass it's uh the thick wrap it's already got the the curves built into it and that's that's what the uh the roof structure is made of that's a that's a big upgrade when you get up into the venetian with with the weight bearing capacity that we have available on the venetian allows us to put that heavier uh, roof skin on the coaches all right, I'm going to combine two questions here for you. Uh, what technologies are used for the slides and weight limits per slide? And are they flat to the floor? So they're not, I mean, we use what's called a flush floor slide. So it actually comes up almost like on a ramp, like a Kevlar ramp. Uh, but when it goes into the full out position, it'll be flush. And then obviously the, the, the other slides that aren't that style, um, you can't even see them because all the cabinets and everything are built out over the ends. But uh, majority of the slides that we use in the Venetian are hydraulic. And um, in order for us to do hydraulic slides, there, there's a considerable upgrade to the Atlas Foundation. We have to build the perimeter uh, steel pieces above the, the basement uh, doors thicker um, to, to support that extra weight. And then we actually build the rams onto the, the actual uh, frame rails of the chassis. And with the full wall slides, um, there's three rams, there's a, a center stabilization ram, and then there's rams on the outsides that drive the slide box in and out that have pressure equalization valves to make sure that um, the slide doesn't walk, meaning that one side moves um, before the other. It all goes consistently. But hydraulics a big deal because um, it's more expensive to put hydraulic slides on the units. Um, and a majority of our competitors choose not to use hydraulic technology uh, because of the expense of it. But when you're talking about big, heavy slide outs, hydraulic slides are going to be able to push more weight. I don't know exactly how much weight that they can handle, uh, but a lot more than, than, than what we're building on these units. Um, you, you can't get stronger, more durable slides than hydraulic. And I think that's the reason why um, I'm so proud of it. And really, the only slides that aren't going to be hydraulic are on occasion in the Venetian are just when it's just the bed itself and it's such a light mechanism. Uh, we'll just do a, like a rack and pinion electric slide on those, but uh, the, the remaining slides are all, all going to be hydraulic, especially the full wall slides. All right. And a suspension question, is the front suspension independent or solid axle? It's a straight axle on, on the front axle. When you move up into the Tuscany, uh, we do offer a ZF uh, independent front suspension. That's one of the one of the advancements going from a Venetian to a Tuscan. I will add though, uh, with the Venetian in 2020, we improved ride and drive significantly uh, by going to 295 ADR tires uh, all the way around. You'll notice in a lot of our competitive competitors products, uh, 275 ADRs are more common. Um, it's about a $3,000 upgrade uh, to go to 295 ADR tires. They're about three and a half inches wider and they have a, a higher load bearing capacity, which enables us to have more carrying capacity in the vehicle. All right. And, and it also we'll be... makes the coach ride much better because if you, when, when you have more rubber on the road, just the better the overall ride is going to be. So those bigger tires really made a huge difference for us. 
All right. Uh, Benjamin is wondering if there is some sort of multi-purpose area for a cat litter box or a dog bed or a kennel or some other inside type of storage for that. You know, we have had some people modify their their rear, uh, you know, bed boxes mm -hmm. underneath the, the beds themselves uh, for stuff like that. But, um, you know, people get creative. I mean, there's sometimes some room back in the rear wardrobes too, but it just, it, it's, it's kind of a floor plan by floor plan thing. We, we have a couple of cats here at home and, and uh, in fact, we're actually looking at, at doing some modifications down in our basement to, to, to make that a little bit more hidden away. So I, I can appreciate that question. Um, on the, on the Palazzo, you know, we have that nice mudroom uh, area mm -hmm. at, at the, at the, at the middle of the coach where a lot of people will use for that. But, um, no, I think it's just, a, it's kind of a floor plan by floor plan thing for, for cats, but every, everybody I've talked to has always been able to find a place where, where they can put that stuff. All right. And for this next one, Tom, I see on the slideshow, just go ahead a couple to the paint jobs. Uh, Benjamin wants to know about, it says what red moon is the primary exterior color? Well, I wouldn't say no. How, how we have, how many paint jobs, how many colors do we have on uh, this to choose from? We, we have, we have four different color schemes. Uh, that one there that you just saw pictured, that's Fox hollow. Uh, we have sanctuary arrowhead and then Innsbruck. So yeah, those are the, those are the four that we have available in, in, in our brand. All right. Uh, can you, is there a central bay locking ability like in the Tuscany where you hit the lock switch and then it locks all the bays? Can you do that in the Venetian? We don't have that feature. That's again, that'll be one of the upgrades when you go from a Venetian to the Tuscany. All right. Um, and we got uh, a couple of bathroom questions here. So are there more tall, bo tall bars in the main bathroom and is the tall, taller shower area for people over six feet? Definitely, definitely okay with the showers. I, I'm six yeah. one, and uh, got lots of room. Obviously, you know, one of the nice things too is all our showers have the skylights in there, which gives you more room. But I don't even think even without the skylight, I mean, our our, our ceiling heights are, are are done in a way, and we 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 lower the shower pans down enough that that I don't I don't believe anybody's is going to have any concerns about about hitting their head. Well, no, a couple um, of our how bar wise, guys, I'm, I'm yeah, yeah, I, I'm ahead. not. I don't have, uh, I know we have them in there and I know she's really Marine. I should say our, our designer is really good about finding places, but, um, you know, certainly if you wanted to add more, I'm sure there's probably some yeah. room to do that. Well, there's quite a bit in there. In fact, when we like in this unit right here, when we shot uh, last week, the R40, uh, when we pull out our kits, uh, to decorate sometimes like, okay, we're going to have to steal towels from the half bath to put back here. Cause we don't have enough to, to hang. Um, yeah. Let's see. Oh, here's a good question. Uh, uh, is it what about a side radiator? Is that going to be an option? Not not on this brand. Um, again, on the Tuscany, when we move up into the Tuscany, we 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 go to a side radiator, and um, it it again, it's just an expense thing. Uh, you know, the cooling packages with these rear radiators today are are so far superior to what I used to deal with 15 years ago, and. Um, there is zero issue with with being able to cool this vehicle um, efficiently um, and and having a rear radiator set up on on the vehicle and and no no real no real desire or or plan to to add that expense to go to a side radiator on this vehicle. All right, question from Ed. I'm going to go back a few models here. Kind of compare this Venetian. Compare the Venetian with the Tuscany XTE. So, yeah, I mean, the XTE um, would have been, again, an ISB engine. Uh, so that, that would be the first thing that would ring true to me is the fact that you're talking about going to quite a bit more torque and power. Um, I really just encourage people not to not to worry too much about horsepower, because I think once you get in the unit, um, and you drive it, you're going to realize that just, you know, torque is really what's going to mean more to you with pulling a vehicle and, and everything else. And, you know, it is a big move going from an ISB engine to an ISL and um, you're going to feel it um, when, when you drive it. Uh, that's a big deal. Um, the Aqua Hot we talked about already. Uh, we didn't offer that in the XTE. Um, you know, the, the, the dash technologies that, that we're doing, you know, furniture upgrades. Um, the uh you know th there's a lot there um you know when, when you when you when you go about comparing those those brands um multiplex um is something that we didn't really offer in the xde um 
I, multiplex is more than just the convenience of being able to use everything. It's also reliability. Um, the majority of the warranty claims that, that not Thor Motor Coach, but the industry encounters are electrically related. And we've been able to really simplify the, system, the electrical systems in the coaches by going to multiplex because it enables us to use multiple, um, use one wire to, to transfer multiple frequencies, which just basically simplifies the, the whole process. And so it just, it, it makes the coaches much more reliable. Um, hyd hydraulic sides were offered in the XT, so uh, that would be similar, but we have improved um, basement height since the XT was built. When we when we developed the Venetian, we actually were able to to, to really cut down the the distance between the top of the the opening of the baggage door and where the slide boxes started uh, by almost like six inches. So there's about six inches more height in the basement uh, than than what what we we offered before. Uh, fiberglass roof was not offered on the XTE. So um, yeah, there's there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of upgrades there. Steve. All right. Power cord uh, reel. We, I didn't even mention it, but we added a power oh, yeah. cord reel to the Venetian last year. We added power water hose reel. We added two additional house batteries. So now there's six um, on board. The, the refrigerator's larger. Uh, we went to a, a 21 cubic foot uh, a Whirlpool refrigerator. We, we added a recessed induction cooktop uh, for, for last year that people really love because you can actually take that whole unit out of the vehicle if you want to, if you want to you know, cook outside or whatnot. So there's, there's a ton of stuff there. All right. Uh, question about the cab HVAC. Are there air filters for the coach AC? Uh, are there filters for the heat? Yeah. So, um, there is filters in the, uh, the returns, um, and they're easy to get off and, and clean. Um, so yeah, there's, 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 uh, there's filters throughout inside the unit. And then, uh, with respect to the the aqua system, I don't know exactly how the filters work with with that. I that would be something we'd have to we'd have to ask our uh, our engineers about. All right, here's a question, uh, Freightliner question. What is V Ride? Walk us through what V Ride technology is, Adam. All right, so so back, I'm going to take everybody back a little ways. So back in uh, 2013, we had a really interesting development happen in the industry where. Uh, RVs were made exempt from federal bridge law. And what federal bridge law had been was um, a, a law that's still out there for, I think, freight um, and, and, and fleet type vehicles where uh, you can't put more than 20,000 pounds on a single axle. The, the drive axle of the motorhome is the, is the heaviest axle. It's the most weight bearing axle on the unit. And we were limited uh, to 20,000 pounds on that axle. Um, back in 13, when they made RVs available up to 24,000 pounds, um, when Freightliner started developing the axle, they, they, um, this new heavier axle, they developed new suspension systems to, to help with, um, body roll and sway and, and just overall stability on the rear end, because they knew that a lot of us manufacturers would want to go to, um, to 40 foot units with single axles now that we were able to and and it used to be back you know going back before this happened that you know we had a hard time selling isl powered you know 8.9 liter cummins powered motorhomes at the 40 foot length because they either had to have a tag axle on them or 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 basically there was just no weight in, in them available. So people had a hard time, but you know, now we're able to do a single axle 40 footer and it just, it rides like a tag because of this new, um, this new suspension technology. Um, I, I really encourage, if you really want to get into the depths of it, uh, to get on the Freightliner Custom Chassis website because they got some great videos showing how that that axle works, and it was such a uh, such a huge impact on ride and drivability that Freightliner said, "What the heck? We might as well just go ahead and institute this V ride even in our smaller axles and even on our tag axle unit." So every every motorhome you buy that has a Freightliner chassis on it anymore, that's the only axle that's available, and it's it's significantly better than what you're going to get with a power glide or a spartan um and it's it's proprietary there's they have it's a patented technology so if don't let anybody tell you that spartan or 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 you know the power glide from tiffin can emulate that because um they, they don't have the patent for it steve 
Okay. Uh, here's a question coming in from Richard. Uh, since Thor Industries purchased Integra, what was the impact for Thor Motor Coach? In other words, do you guys work together sharing stuff and ideas, or do you carry on as before on your own? We don't share anything with them. They're they're uh, they're as big a competitor of ours as anyone else. We um, Thor Industries is what's referred to as a decentralized company. Um, companies so every subsidiary acts on their own and and uh no we um i guess if somebody was going to buy something other than the thor and they were just dead set on not buying it we'd tell them go take a look at integra but that'll, that'll be about where the end is uh, i'm I'm, fr I'm friends with those guys over there um carter who runs their division and and ken who's his boss and and their vp of product development and i used to work together at monica for like 10 years so you know, there's a there's friendly friendly rivalry if if there is anything such as that. But uh, no, we we uh, we believe we build a better product than they do, and I'm sure they probably say the same thing. So. All right, uh, let's move on to a couple of questions here. I'm going to kind of combine them together uh, and summarize them both. Uh, let's talk about uh, lithium and the possibility of lithium. I know you and I were uh, in Utah just over a year ago with the Tuscany Lithium Pack. Um, is any of that technology coming down the road for us anytime soon? Not, not soon. Uh, you know, we, we went all the way. I mean, John Kreider, who I work with on the development side, he, he partnered with the company that supplies like the Liberty buses, you know, the, probably the most expensive Prevo out there. And we put a, it was like an $85,000, uh, lithium, uh, system on a unit. In fact, it, it's, it's, uh, Motor Home Specialist has it for sale down at, at, uh, down in Alvarado, if anybody's interested in getting something in lithium, but um, it's the only one we ever built. Um, it's just the, the money, the money right now, uh, the expense of the systems that are out there, it just, it, it's, it's not a reasonable thing. Um, you know, I'm sure as, as technology continues to get more affordable, um, you know, we'll continue to look at that. But um, right now, you know, lithium is just not something that, that we feel good and comfortable with. Um, over and above what our current technologies are. But again, you know, just like solar or anything else, we're always gonna, you're always gonna pay attention to this stuff. I mean, we even visited Tesla um, about, uh, it's going on probably about two years ago. So we've been way ahead on this thing. And, um, you know, I know there's some other conversations that are being had behind the scenes. Um, I sold a, sold a customer, a Tuscany that um, is, is, a, is big with General Motors and, and uh, they've, they've, you know, I know they got some great technologies that are out there. So, um, you know, we, we, we will, uh, you know, we will continue to pay attention to things. Um, and, and as things make sense and, uh, you know, we will, we will, we will pursue them. But as of right now, there's nothing planned. All right. A couple more questions to get through before we wrap up. Uh, this is from diesel club. Don, when is Thor going to give up on the Anderson water valve set and go back to ball valves? Don needs to call Kreider. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Um, I, I don't know why we went to this other system, um, but yeah, that's that's something that uh, you know I'm not I'm not as familiar with. I know that he's he's a big proponent of doing that, and well, and, Don, uh, we know we both know Don. Don just likes to stir it up. That's what, yeah, no, I, Don, I, I, I mean, Don, we, we, you we, like uh, to stir it up, buddy. I definitely, <laughs> I definitely will talk to Kreider yeah. again about it, and and if there's something better out there, we'll certainly take a look. A uh, uh, question. This isn't Venetian related, uh, but uh, how reliable or fixable is the floor heater? So from the Tuscany and it, we're, we're jumping units here, but the floor heater in the Tuscany that's available. Yeah. So, so we, we actually, we were the last to market with um, heated floors. And the reason why is, you know, in certain things, you know, we just take extra time because we want to be especially careful. And we looked at five different systems in, re in R and D and we went over a year looking at the different systems and, you know, how well we could institute the stuff within the plant with our current processes. And uh, we ended up with the most expensive system, which is uh, from gold heat, which is a, a company out from out West that actually I was familiar with because we, uh, we used that product when I was at Monaco coach corporation. Um, but um, yeah, it's, it's cool because it's a heat grid and, and um, that mesh, you can actually, there's actually a, a, a system where you can actually go in and you can actually detect if there's a, there's a disconnect. So you don't have to tear up the whole floor to, to find it. Fortunately, we, I, I'm not familiar with any Tuscany's that we've built where we had a problem with the floor heating working. Um, but if there was going to be a problem, 
then uh, then then you can. There's actually a machine that can. I think it's. I think within like a foot and a half, it can it can establish where that uh, connectivity issue is. Uh, as we talk about uh, safety features here, Tom and Judy want to know: Are there safety features such as you have in new autos, like collision avoidance, lane assist, adaptive cruise control, etc.? So Freightliner does offer what they refer to as road tech. And we are looking at some of the different features that are involved there. Um, currently, we're not offering any of those things, but they're certainly up for discussion and, and uh, you know, something that we may decide to implement here down the road. Okay. Any plan of adding an emergency door to your motor homes? Again, another one that has come up a couple of times. I, I, I don't, I, my reservation and, and, you know, you guys can talk me out of this, but uh, my reservation is is how it changes our rear bathrooms because that's typically where you you have to put them, and usually that means you know losing a window. I guess you could put a window in the escape door if you wanted to, um, but uh, you know it's just it's just a matter of you know what we're going to be willing to lose in order to add one to the unit. But um, again, something that we is is on our radar, but uh, currently right now. Uh, neither road tech or or emergency doors is, is something that's that's on any product plan for the future. All right. And David writes, love our M37. Are you considering bringing it back to the product line? I love that floor plan. Um, you know, I, it was the first floor plan that we ever designed for the Venetian when we first released it. Um, it's actually a lot like um, our R40, but just without the rear bath. And that's what it enabled us to go a little shorter but um you know it's just for some reason we just didn't have a ton of success um in the venetian product with under 40 foot units but you know if if, if there were going to be any shorter than 40 foot coaches that we would bring back out the m37 was our best seller so that would probably have the best chance to to to, to be something that we would revisit but uh, yeah if there's a call for for shorter uh, coaches like the Venetian, again, um, you know, we, we we got rid of tag axle Venetians for a while, and then we just brought two back, and they've been selling great. So, you know, maybe maybe it's time. Maybe that'll be the next one John and I talk about. Who knows? All right, and that wraps up our questions. Is there anything, Adam, that uh, we didn't touch on, or that uh, questions we didn't get asked today that you want to hit on real quick before we wrap it up? Well, you know, I Stephen, and I've talked about this till I'm blue in the face but I haven't had a chance to really talk to anybody for a while because everything that's been going on. But yeah. I will tell you this guy that we hired as our new VP operations. And I don't know if he loves that. I bring up his name all the time. Uh, but I mean, literally like if he ran for president, I'd probably vote for him um, is, is Jeff Newport. Um, we, we brought him over from, from uh, he was out of the business for a while and uh, he, he is, has come in and he has completely changed our motor coach and, um, I, I will tell you with a hundred percent confidence that I've never built or never been involved in building a better motorhome than what we're building at Thor. Um, I, I believe we build the best quality unit in the business now, which, you know, people might look at me and say, you're crazy. But if, if you're saying I'm crazy, it's because you haven't seen the new product that we've been building, um, out here. I mean, our, our people are, are behind us. Um, you know, he's done such a great job of, of building culture and, 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 and really just showing um, the love to, to, to the factory workers that are in there every day, you know, you know, working their tails off. Um, there's just a pride and workmanship attitude that, that has, has just evolved with us. And I, I felt like every single day I was there, we just got better at it. And, and um, you can feel it. I wish we, I wish we could give tours right now. You know, that was one of the things that we were really encouraging a lot of people to do, even our dealers to come up and, and see the difference. But uh, um, our product's awesome. We're building such a clean, um, you know, our, the amount of deficiencies has gone way down. I, I, I hadn't, I've been asking for another quarterly report to compare year over year because uh, our first quarter, we saved almost $800,000 in warranty expense. I don't even know if I'm supposed to say that publicly, but it's pretty impressive considering that, you know, we stand behind our products and we take care of our customers and we're still saving that kind of money. You know how many less deficiencies, how many less frustration. I, I built a new house here in South Bend and I got like 
I got like a punch list of like 80 items and they won't come in the house because they won't do any service work right now. And uh, I mean, I, I can appreciate the frustration when you spend a lot of money, hard earned money, and then you're having to deal with these little things that should have never got out of the factory in the first place. And we've gotten really good at building diesel motorhomes. And, you know, we're anxious to get these people back in to continue to keep improving because I feel like every single day we get better at it. And it, it, it starts with Jeff, but he's, he's brought in a lot of this Toyota, Kaizen, lean manufacturing stuff for any of you guys out there that, that really understand operational management. And he's been really nice about sharing a lot of these philosophies with me so that I can truly understand them. But I mean, I mean, even just from a standpoint of efficiency and, and scrap and everything else, I and mean, we just done such a darn good job of, of building a clean, reliable unit that, that people can be proud of. Yeah, it really is. When we open back up, which will hopefully be here soon, we invite you to come up for a tour. You can find that information on our website, thormotorcoach.com. If you have any more questions about the Venetian, you can reach out to our Coach Link advisor. You'll find that on thormotorcoach.com. Sales advisor, click on that tab, fill out the information, and our team will get back to you. But uh, some great things happening for us in the future at Thor Motor Coach. Adam, I appreciate your time this afternoon. Hopefully, I'll see you back in the office before you know it. And uh, we can we can get in the units and do these things together live. And, and Don, you'll be able to see Tom again. He'll, he's, he, he's still in the background. Adam, thank you so much for your time today. Everybody who watched and asked questions, we appreciate it. I'm going to repost this a little bit later in case you didn't get a chance to catch all of it or you tuned in later. You have a friend who would be interested. You can share it that way. So we will see you next time. Adam, you have a wonderful weekend and we'll see you real soon. Yeah, everybody stay safe out there. And, and uh, you know, if you need anything from Thor, you know, our service center, uh, our service, I'm sorry, our customer service people are available. Uh, we're all available to help you in any way if you're out there with a the unit. And, uh, you know, we appreciate everyone and uh, just uh, take care of yourselves and your families. And we'll look forward to seeing you down the road. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.